Hello and welcome to a new segment I really hope doesn't become too common. I used to write articles like this a lot for my blog, but ever since trying to do video reviews, I did my best to push myself to finish games. Thus far, The Prince of Persia Reboot and Mighty No. 9 are the only ones I have not finished. And I lost the footage of Prince of Persia, so Mighty No. 9 it is. But I fully admit that I backed it out of spite against Capcom, not out of excitement of a new old-style Mega Man. I prefer the X-Series far more than the classic Blue Bomber due to really liking certain elements, like wall climbing. But with how excited everyone was, I was looking forward to the game and had faith even after so many delays. Then the missteps happened! Like more Kickstarters for Red Ash, and certain other factors that I will not go into since I want to focus on the game, so let's just do that. The story is really damn weak. You can skip the cutscenes, thankfully, but sometimes dialogue boxes can be intrusive for bosses. Though it's still not as bad as Azure Striker Gunball 2. Seriously, why do you do this? The plot feels like it was the sequel to another story we never quite got. All with weak twists because you don't know anything about the characters. Instead, we have to be told everything, especially during the finale with Trinity's feelings. The only interesting element is having the other Mighty Numbers helping Beck in a support role, and some are genuinely likable. Sadly, even Beck is not really interesting, with Dr. White stealing most of the dialogue whenever he can. Oh, and the ending is probably one of the most insulting things I have ever seen. It's three screens! I'm dead serious! With one of them making absolutely no damn sense as Cole and Trinity, we're never stated to have any kind of link together. It just comes right the hell out of left field. Oh, but there is a post credit scene. After four hours. You know, the four-hour credits. I'm dead serious. Then only time will tell if this mighty number nine, this Beck, is a blessing or a curse. <laughs> the gameplay also has a lot of bad design choices, both in the graphics and how the game actually plays. Special powers feel mostly useless barring a couple, hit detection in certain fights feels really stupid, and the other dumb elements added for no goddamn reason. Like this stupid duck dash that must be pixel perfect! Or they will be boring as well, like the sniper level in the hallway. There were rare moments when I had fun, like with the raid DLC. Which shouldn't have been DLC, and seemed to be one of those stages that should interrupt a Mega Man game before going back to working towards the finale. Rey is also never mentioned again barring her own campaign, and can only be played during the new game plus. And not to mention, it's really damn pointless. I also hate the way sub-tanks are handled in this game. I honestly could never figure out how they worked. Turns out I am forced to read about everything, and even then I can't just do what other Mega Man games did. And there lies the problem. There are no health or armor upgrades to hunt for, no secrets or anything of the sort. It's my favorite thing to do in side-scrollers like this. Instead, it wants me to play like a speedrunner, which I hate because I would rather take my time to finish a game. Although, because of how infuriating some segments are, yeah, I do want to finish the game as soon as humanly possible. Also, I gotta say that in a game where you have to dash into enemies, basic contact with enemies dealing damage is really damn stupid. And there's really no point in using other weapons besides one or two because of this mechanic as well. The visuals are not too kind on my eyes either, especially the bright neon colors in the final stage that just becomes a near incomprehensible mess by the time I got to the final boss. It was so hard to see a damn thing, and my frustration just couldn't be held anymore, messing me up at every turn. The only reason I stopped was because the ending just wasn't worth it. I was just needlessly torturing myself. It's also pointless to do a review because, well, everyone has revealed how badly designed this game is. Everyone has said it sucks so much. There is nothing I can add except this brief video explaining my frustration and disappointment. And at this point, I'm pretty much burned out and can't even muster the energy to really rage out. And you know the kind of rage I'm talking about. However, I will say this. My number nine is not gonna make me stop backing video games. There are genuinely good ones that I am looking forward to. Cosmic Star Heroine is one I've been dying for and should be releasing this year, hopefully. Shovel Knight was a giant success as well, and I dumped so much cash in Bloodstained and Indivisible as both games look incredible. There are plenty of good games and devs I have faith in. Moreover, I'm not backing these out of spite, which was the big mistake I made with my number 9. Especially when I later found out it was in the Fune's fault, we did get certain... ...games. So yeah, this game is not good. I'm suddenly glad my spidey sense kicked in and told me to back this game only at $20 instead of $60. Glad I listened to you now, Brain. Lord knows I could have avoided that with Final Fantasy XIII. 
I'm the smartest moron, and I'll go back to games I actually want to finish.